40 miles east in Epping, New Hampshire, conservation officer Mike Matson heads out to handle an animal control call. Being a conservation officer in the state of New Hampshire is really pretty incredible. When you're focusing on actually protecting wildlife, that's a lot of fun. Oftentimes, you'll have these so-called animal problems that are more people problems than they are animal problems. We're encroaching on the animal's land, and hopefully, with enforcement and good laws, we'll be able to preserve the wildlife for generations to come. Hello. Hi, is this Jane? Yes. Jane, this is Mike Matz of the Fishing Game. What's going on? We captured a raccoon because it was coming into our house. He broke the lock. He just forced it open in the garage and came in. How long has he been in there? Since early this morning. He doesn't look well. He's lost a lot of his fur, so maybe it's just mange, but I don't know. I'm going to come take a look at it, but make sure this stays out of your house. Okay. So we're interested in taking a look at it, seeing if it's sick or not, uh, determining whether or not it's best to either let it go or go ahead and euthanize it. Raccoons are considered a primary carrier of the rabies virus in the United States. The lethal disease is carried in their saliva and transmitted by bites. An infected raccoon may appear sickly, be aggressive, and make abnormal vocalizations. There it is. Well, and there's our raccoon. There's your friend, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's cranky. He's got a little skin missing. Is that mange? Uh, hard to tell just yet. I mean, that looks like a more rubbing. If it's mange, mange usually attacks the tail first. Yeah, he's unhappy. I wouldn't want him in my house for sure. He's been coming in. And we'd wake up in the morning and find the cat food all eaten. I stayed on the couch last night because if the trap was set, I actually set it right up to the cat door so that he would come in and go right into the trap, because that's how he was getting into the house. Well, let me see what I can do with him, and I'll let you know. So I'll take him for now and go from there. Uh, yeah. All right. Time will tell once we release him. Uh, if he decides to turn on us and come after us, maybe he actually is sick, be it distemper or rabies. And if it is, I will have to euthanize this raccoon, unfortunately. He doesn't realize it. You son of a gun. All right, bud. I know. You're a ferocious beast. Now, this guy here, he's going to be in raccoon heaven over here. And I'm going to scoot when he goes. Yeah. I know. Planning your next move for me, huh, bud? He took right off. That's exactly what we're looking for. There's nothing about this raccoon that's indicative of it having rabies or any other type of uh, neurological disease. It's a happy day for the raccoon. I'm happy I was able to help this woman out with releasing the raccoon. Ultimately, those are dangerous animals. You don't want to get your fingers too close. With that said, I'm really happy with what we've been able to achieve to uh, take this healthy raccoon, put it in a better place. Both parties are going to be real happy for it. In Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, conservation officer Chris Egan heads to First Connecticut Lake to assist in Fish and Game's fish stocking initiative. So today is the one or two days a year that we do aerial stocking of our remote ponds. And I'm headed to meet with uh, the pilot. Every year, the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department stocks the state's lakes and ponds with nearly a million trout. The fish are raised in hatcheries, while biologists determine where and when the fish will be released. The chopper is used to best get them to these remote ponds that aren't accessible by vehicle. You'll be able to get a little closer in a minute, but we're just going to have you stand over here for now, OK? 70 miles south in Success, New Hampshire, Sergeant Mark Ober and biologist Andy Schaefermeyer are also helping stock the state's lakes and ponds. We're at Success Pond. We're getting ready to stock some brook trout, rainbow trout, and brown trout. 
One bucket of lake water will even the temperature between the truck and the boat. If the fish were to be stocked on shore here today, two things would happen. First of all, the water is the warmest on the shore. And second of all, when fish get stocked, they're nervous, they're stressed out, and they're respirating. Uh, if they were to respirate the sand and dirt that we kicked up, that's very unhealthy for them. So we're going to take them to deeper parts of the lake where they have an opportunity to get to deeper, colder water quicker. We're right next to First Connecticut Lake. It's kind of central to the remote ponds that the helicopter has to bring the fish to. It's also a public beach. It's a public boat launch. And uh, there happens to be a bunch of kids here today. So part of my job here is going to be to contain the kids from going too close. That truck right there has got a bunch of little fish in it. They're about this big. And we'll show you what they look like. Trout, yeah, brook trout. I think I know what you're going to do. You're going to fly over and get some fish. That's right. That's right. The helicopter's here. Carl is the pilot. He's helped us do this program for quite a few years now. There's a guy named Matt on board. He works for our department. How's it hey, going, Chris? How you doing? Good. I am New Hampshire Fish and Games hatchery biological technician. I deal with all the hatcheries in terms of health, stocking. Actually, if you're going to be running buckets, I'll just go right into the... I can run them all if you want. It's fine, too. OK. I'm going to be helping take the fish from the tanks on the truck, running them in buckets over to Matt in the helicopter. Some days kind of make up for other days in this line of work. So a day like today, I get to watch the kids get excited about seeing a helicopter come in and show them the fish on the truck. And that's really what, it, what it's all about. Off to the new home. So Carl's going to fly me in. We're going to land. These pontoons are on top of the water. We measure the fish. That way we can know the actual amount of fish we're putting in there. Load them up, drop them into the water, take off. Fishing is a popular sport here in the state. And without the stocking program, a lot of bodies of water probably would be void of fish through environmental factors, overfishing, what have you. The whole essence of what we're trying to do is make sure there's enough fish out there for all people to fish. 